Oke. Okay. Yes, so. Hi guys, you're watching channel Mr. Electron and today in this video I'm going to make a really powerful electric generator with this angle grinder. Now you might be thinking that yes I have already made a video on that. I want to tell you that this video is different because in the previous video I used a small 3.7 volts battery which was used to excite the armature and the field coils of the motor of an angle grinder which is not going to be the case this time. This time I am not going to use any battery or any circuit and still it is going to generate full power output the most important point is that the motor inside this angle grinder is universal motor it's not dc motor it's not induction motor so this technique that i am applying here with this machine is also going to apply on your mixer motors or some washing machine motors so guys this is the angle grinder and if you see the label it's showing 850 watts 220 volts and 11,000 rotations per minute and let's give it a spin here's the switch So guys, for this, you are going to need a working angle grinder, not a dead one. So let's start with the changes that you have to do to turn it into a generator. So the first part is to remove the disc if it's installed. Now these two, what you see are pulley like things and I got them from a car alternator and uh, I'm going to use these two. To fit the shaft of this angle grinder one goes like this the other one sorry this and the other one like this and this time this will be connected in the opposite direction okay got it seems fine let's give it a spin once again holding it tightly yeah working as expected now comes the part of turning it into a generator so the second part is to disconnect it from the mains power supply which is obvious now guys with that being done take the wires of this angle grinder these two wires and connect it directly to 6 to 12 volts or even 20 volts load i'm going to use this bulb two wires are here and two wires are here simply connect them together yeah that's it in my previous video you saw me connect a battery in series with the load which is the bulb and the two wires of the angle grinder at present that is not the case turn on the angle grinder and it should light up look closely did it light up of course not because you have to cross the threshold voltage that it is going to generate before that it is not going to produce any electricity that was the main part of this video so at a certain specific rpm this universal motor starts becoming an electric generator not before that now i'm going to carry on the same process but with higher rpm for that i have this thread this time the rpm is going to be much higher than the initial spin let's pull it this time the rpm is going to be high you saw let's try it once again cool right now let's turn off the lights and see how bright the illuminance is so guys the lights are turned off as you can see okay you saw how bright it was it was really bright and uh, the efficiency of it when being used as an electric generator is very good very very good now guys i know what few of you are going to do they are going to 
pause the video right here and go and find out an angle grinder if they can't get an angle grinder they will find a universal motor because in the video mr electron said that an angle grinder contains a universal motor so this technique is going to apply on this universal motor also and they will get some universal motor maybe a sieving machine motor from their grandmother and then try to convert it into an electric generator using the same technique so let's do that bulb connected motor here let's wound the thread and now they are going to be really happy because they are going to see this bulb glow okay excitement level highest go oops the bulb did not glow mr electron is a fraud maybe he is lying maybe he somehow hit the battery inside that angle grinder if you would have watched the video completely you wouldn't have been saying this and the first thing that they are going to do after doing this test is go to my video and write a comment negative comment fake video the problem is guys you have to watch the explanation also now a universal motor can be used as an electric generator if the armature and the field winding uses thick copper coils with low resistance overall resistance now i'm going to show you with the circuit how it works so guys the explanation behind it is this diagram that you see it is of an ac dc series motor which is a universal motor this piece that you see is the armature and this piece that you see is the field winding although a universal motor has two field windings but this is just a diagram so i'm showing only a single field winding and both the two windings are connected in series here you see this one is connected in series with the armature or a rotor and these two terminals are the final output terminals any other device that you have or a machine part mechanical part that you have example a screwdriver it has residual magnetism uh, and uh, your drill bits they also have residual magnetism now these are two clips and this is my drill bit here you will see residual magnetism you see that it is dragging it little by little So that's the residual magnetism that I was talking about. Now because of previous operation, some residual magnetism is always left in the motors, which is being utilized here in this universal motor. This is the armature and let's assume that the motor was stopped at a point, like uh, the switch was turned off at a point such that the poles stop with residual magnetism of north over here and south over here now when this rotor or this armature or rotor is rotated at high rpm or run at high rpm residual magnetism is going to induce emf in the field winding because of which some voltage is going to appear on the final two terminals which is going to be very low now when you will connect a 12 volts bulb in between these two terminals that low current is going to flow through the 12 volts bulb after that comes the second phase and in the first phase the current is flowing through the bulb but still the bulb is not glowing because the power generated by the residual magnetism is very weak understandable right now that small current is going to enter the armature winding also since the armature winding is connected in series with the field winding now that additional current is going to boost the pole strength residual pole strength and turn them into stronger poles than they were before because of which more emf is going to get induced in the field poles and more current is going to flow through the same 12 volts bulb connected in the connected initially now comes the second phase in which more current is flowing through the bulb so there is going to be an exponential growth in current 
and the bulb will start lighting up slightly the current is going to enter the bulb and then again enter the armature and this time even more current is going to fed to the armature poles so again the armature poles are going to get really strong and more emf is again going to be fed to the field poles and this process is going to repeat until it achieves full pole strength magnetic strength on the poles and the bulb starts lighting up really bright and what is this entire magnetism and uh, induced emf going to depend upon it is going to depend upon the rpm at which this armature or rotor is being operated by an external power source which was my hand in case of the angle grinder if you are going to use some external machine then that is going to be the driving force so higher the rpm of the armature more will be the emf induced in the field poles and more will be the current flowing through the bulb and thus exciting the armature once again now guys there is one question that arises why did i use only a 12 volts bulb a low voltage bulb and not a 220 volts or a higher resistance bulb now guys that is because a higher voltage bulb generally has higher resistive value now guys let's assume that around 1 volt gets induced in the field winding now because of the connected high voltage bulb or high resistive load very less current is going to flow to the armature winding of the rotor which is our main priority because that current is going to increase the residual strength of the magnetic poles and uh, make them even stronger poles to turn it into a powerful generator now that process will be eliminated because of the high resistive load being your 220 volts bulb now guys some of you might be thinking that why is it that the residual magnetism is available only on the armature poles and not on the field poles so guys that is not the case residual magnetism is also available on the field poles but still it does not matters because the result is still going to be the same there is going to be a fight of magnetic pole strength between the field poles and the armature poles whichever is going to win is going to override the other one and thus the same process is going to follow so with that i'm going to finish the video please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe uh, i'm going to give you full understanding of all the projects like initially i was coming with the projects and uh, it was only demonstration type but from now on i'm going to bring proper explanation in the video so that you can learn not just get entertained and see it perform but also get a better understanding of it see you in the next video please subscribe bye bye so guys your question for today is what did i do to convert a 12 volts car alternator into a 36 volts generator in my previous video